Hello again, I'm Blunty, and this is a box with a picture of the HTC Incredible S on it. It also has HTC Incredible S written on it, and inside is a HTC Incredible S. Hooray! The world makes sense, and everything is as it should be. As you can see from the branded boot up here, this review unit came courtesy of Optus. So it seems only fair to mention that right now they've got it available on their cap plan starting at just $19 a month. But I'm not really here to plug what the folks at Optus are selling it for. I'm here to let you know if the phone sucks or rocks. Now then, usually when I do a product review, it's because there's something special about it. It might be the flagship model of the brand, or it might have a special feature set, or maybe it's just especially good at something. That's usually. The HTC Incredible S is different. It's not the flagship product. It doesn't have any special party piece feature to make people go, ooh. It's not even the best at anything it does at all. But don't jump to conclusions here. That doesn't mean it's not worth a look. Just because there's such a thing as a Bugatti Veyron doesn't automatically mean that the Toyota Yaris doesn't have a place in the world. And that's what the HTC Incredible S is, really. It's the Toyota Yaris. It's inexpensive, reliable, simple, and rather surprisingly good. I'm not convinced it deserves the name Incredible, and I don't really know what the S is supposed to stand for. But after using it for a couple of weeks, I think I'd have called it the HTC Trusty. Well, the HTC, not bad. It never made me explode with glee, but, but it was a very, very dependable performer. It ran with a solid consistency. It was always responsive and smooth. It runs a 1 gigahertz Scorpion processor, an Adreno 205 graphics chip, and 786 megabytes of RAM. Familiar specs for a nice mid-range Android handset these days. The screen is well, it's better than average, actually. It sports a super LCD panel secured behind tough Gorilla Glass. It's nice and sharp and quite bright, actually. Once more, it's not the best screen you can lay eyes on today, but it certainly never gave me any reason to complain. Physically, it's kind of weird looking. Well, not from the front bit you're staring at most of the time. That looks quite like any other handset from HTC, or anyone else, really. Around the back, though, the lines of its rear end are... Well, let's say a little bit less graceful. There's also a camera, of course, and a dual LED flash as well. Now, those of you who've watched some of my other reviews I've done of Android handsets will know by now that I have no love for the default camera interface. Thankfully, HTC seem to agree with me on this one, and they've chosen to replace it with their own home-cooked version, and I quite like this. It's clean, simple, has a certain elegance, and makes changing settings or applying the built-in effects fast and intuitive. It's easy. The tap focus works reliably, if not especially quick. Switching between stills mode and video mode, however, is blink and you'll miss it quick, which is awesome. I also like that you can fine-tune many of the effects with an easy touchscreen gesture, swipe or a poke or whatnot. Now, up until this point, things have been sitting comfortably in the kingdom of the average. And understandably, I'd expected the same from the camera's performance, but my expectations were sucker-punched. The pictures it actually captures are really surprisingly good. It's an 8 megapixel shooter and will do video at 720p. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. The images are nice and sharp across the frame. Colors are well saturated. The auto exposure and white balance were each quite well behaved in most situations, but could be thrown off from time to time. It usually sided with underexposure rather than overexposure, which is the better choice to make if you're unsure about things really. Unfortunately shutter lag, that is the time between you pressing the shutter and a photo actually being taken, was irritatingly slow as it is on a lot of Android devices if I'm fair about it. What it basically means is you'll often miss that decisive moment if you're trying to catch just a little bump of action. Chances are, unless you try and adjust for the shutter lag and anticipate that moment you actually want to photograph and press the shutter before the moment thing that happens that you want to photograph, you're going to miss it. It's an exercise in frustration. But for most happy snaps, that's not really going to be an issue. Shutter speed was a little bit slow at times, meaning movement could blur a little bit sooner than you might have expected it to. The macro focusing, though, was approaching excellent, being nice and crisp, while the background bokeh was surprisingly pleasant and buttery, especially for such a small lens and tiny sensor. Hell, even most of the built-in effects were quite pleasing and actually quite fun to shoot with. In video mode, we trip backwards rather ungracefully back into the realm of the average, hitting that good enough spot. It's 
It's not so bad as to make a big deal out of it and come up with some clever metaphor to mock it with, but also not good enough to be remarkable in any way. Unless, of course, you, for whatever reason, decide to switch down into one of the lower resolution modes. Because when you do that, it starts buying tickets for Suckfest 2011 pretty damn quickly. Back in the land of the hardware, the battery lives in average town, as you may expect. It should get most average people through their average day in their average lives. But power users might want to keep the charger somewhere handy just in case. The screen, while pretty, is unusually smudge happy. You'll be cleaning this thing a lot. You'll get 16 gigabytes worth of micro SD memory packed in, which of course you can switch out for something bigger if you need to, thankfully without having to remove the battery like some other models force you to do just to change the memory card, which pisses me off. Now, I know a lot of Android enthusiasts really don't like HTC's Sense UI interface, they lay over the Android bones, but for the average person it's sensible enough to feel logical and irritation free, it's even quite nice at times, it's got a nice easy way to skin the look for a bit of personal flair, and it keeps many of the handiest features nice and quick to get at. And at the end of the day, just like at the start of the day, what we have here with the HTC Incredible S is a dependable, worry-free Android smartphone. With a pretty decent camera, performance that is smooth, steady and responsive, this is a phone for people who just want a nice phone. It won't make you feel outclassed sitting next to your workmate's iPhone, and while it won't outshine its fellow letter S suffixed Android, the Samsung Galaxy S2, I find it hard to believe anyone who owns one of these will be unhappy with it in any regard. Thanks for watching, I'm Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.